Hi, let's get started with actually downloading some sample programs into this Adafruit Hulsa 32 board. Now, in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to install the Arduino in the computer and we need to add this board in the board manager of Arduino. I'm considering you have not done anything before. If you have done something on Arduino, much better. It will give a good heads up. But even if you have not done anything, no matter, we'll just do it, everything right here from scratch. So just let me give you what we want to do. We want to install Arduino in our system and then we have to add this link into the preferences of Arduino after which we'll be able to download the ESP32 board. So let's get started. I'll first go to arduino.cc and we'll try to download the Arduino software. If you have it already, no need to do it again. <coughs> I'll just go to software and I will download the latest Arduino IDE. So Windows Win 7 and newer best ways to download an installer. If you want to donate something just to we do it annually so I'll just do download. And now the Arduino software package will get downloaded on your system. Once the Arduino installer is downloaded on your computer all you have to do is just double click the installer file and let the Arduino get installed. Also remember when the Arduino is being installed make sure to click yes to all the driver installation that it will ask you for. I'll just start the installation and I will say yes to any drivers it asks me to install. Just to I agree. Next, keep the default location. Next and let it get completed. It shouldn't take more than two minutes uh, depending upon your computer but even on much simpler systems, much uh, tinier systems also, it doesn't take much time. Alternatively, you can also use Arduino Cloud, but we prefer having the programs offline on our computer. So even if you don't have access to internet, which doesn't happen nowadays, but even if you don't have the internet access, you would be able to use the programs that you have. It happens sometimes the network connections get lost, there is some problem in internet, may take an hour for it to restore and meanwhile you want to work on something important. So best way is to have everything offline. A bit conventional thinking but yes it is. So Arduino installation is completed. It has not asked me to install any drivers because in my computer all the drivers are already there. But it will definitely ask you if you are doing the installation for the first time. Now let's open the Arduino and next step is if I go to this presentation you can see the next step is to add below link to the preferences of Arduino. We'll see what is preferences but first I'll copy this link completely and now inside Arduino go to file and preferences. Here, you can see additional board manager URLs can be installed here. So, whatever was there previously, uh, I don't know, if it is a blank installation, there would be nothing. I have just reinstalled by uninstalling, therefore, I can see some previous stuff. So, I have copied this link here and pasted it, the same one from the presentation. So, all you need to do is just do this here, click OK. Now I will go to tools and board manager and then you will be able to search for ESP32. That's it. Now you see ESP32 is already installed on my computer. As I told you, I removed the Arduino and reinstalled it. Therefore, the board definitions and everything remains the same over here. Still, what I'll do is, I'll try to install the latest one, which is, which is 2.0.1. Remember, installing ESP32 board is uh, installing a completely different compiler altogether for ESP32. So, it may take some time. As you can see here, it is 
KB. It means one almost 149 MB you can say, which is not a very small size to download. Therefore, just wait for it to be completed and then we'll continue with the experiment. Now the download has been completed. It will take its own time depending upon your internet speed as well as the speed of your computer to download and then install the ESP32 boards. Meanwhile, what you can do is if Arduino is connected to your computer, so this is micro USB cable I'm having which is required for the ESP32 HUSA board to work. So I'll just connect the cable over here and if I have a driver installed then you will hear a beep post which what you can do is go to device manager on your computer and see if you can see a COM port coming up now see silicon labs cp210x usb to uart bridge this one is the COM port for arduino board now what i'll do is or esp32 huza board now what i'll do is i'll remove my arduino you can see that one board has vanished so whenever you connect it you will get to see the COM port number if it is not coming up it means you need to install drivers for this ESP32 or HUSA32 board most of the times the drivers are already installed but if they are not then you can simply search for CP2102 USB to UART bridge drivers it is very straightforward and simple to find and you can install it let's see the Arduino board installation is completed now what I'll do is I'll try to use or I'll try to select the Arduino ESP32 board or HUSA32 board from the board manager and I will try to download a blink program let's see so in your Arduino installation <coughs> by default if you go to tools and if you go to board you will for sure see Arduino Uno as your default board selected for a fresh installation but when I go to this option here I can see I have Arduino AVR boards and then there are ESP32 Arduino boards. Now what we want to do is we want to go to ESP32 boards or ESP32 Arduino boards and we want to find out this particular board here, our Dafruit ESP32 Feather. A Dafruit ESP32 Feather. I have selected the Adafruit ESP32 Feather board. On every Arduino board, you know that there is a built-in LED. Sometimes it is connected to pin number 13 on Ada Arduino Uno. In case of board like HUSA32, you can see it here. The onboard LED is connected at which pin? Let's try to find out over here. So I guess it is somewhere we discussed it. So on this HUSA32 feather board, the LED, there is an onboard LED you can see over here, which is red colored one, if powered on, is connected to pin number 13, which is also EDC2 and touch input pin. Let's try to write a program for it. So this is a convention made in Arduino that LED built-in is referred as the built-in LED. Whatever is your board, it will try to get it. But we'll just try to make it 13. If you are not aware of the typical Arduino programming setup, then an every Arduino program consists of two primary things. So one is called as void setup and another one is called as void loop. Void setup is something that executes only once and void loop is something that executes forever. So whatever you write down in void loop is your main program that you need to be looped in continuously forever. Let's say it's a temperature logger on the cloud. So you want to read temperature, send it over to cloud. Let's say wait for five seconds. Again, read temperature, send it over to cloud, wait for five seconds. So this should come in your loop. But in order to use the temperature sensor, in order to connect to the network, you need to do some initialization code that you will do in void setup. If you are completely unaware of the coding structure of Arduino, don't worry. As we go on, you will try to understand things easily. So first thing we need is, or first thing we write is, in setup we write pin mode 13, comma output. And then we write in our loop, digital write 13, comma high, digital write 13, comma low. Now that's a very simple blink program that I'm going to do. 
and I will save it as let's say I'll just create a folder on my desktop I'll call it ESP32 codes and I'll just call it blink now I have saved this what I'll do is just to make things simpler I'll keep the delay of two seconds now we are all set the ESP32 board is selected then you need to select this COM port again look at here Silicon Labs USB to UART bridge comes at COM10 so select COM10 in the ports and then you are ready to upload the code just click on this button upload and you will see the code will start uploading onto the board there is an LED which blinks faster when the code is being downloaded I'll show you that but first let's see how the code downloads and how we can see the output on our LED so you can notice the status is here for now what it is doing is it is trying to compile the sketch once the sketch compilation is done it will try to upload that onto the feather 32 or ESP 32 Adafruit board let's wait for a couple more moments so you can see the progress bar here you can see the progress messages here let it get finished completely and then will be able to see now see it is uploading connecting writing 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 a lot of statuses leaving hard resetting via reset pin now you can see the code is downloaded can you notice the LED blinking with a delay of two seconds on for two seconds off for two seconds on for two seconds off for two seconds look at it here now this is the LED that I was talking about which appears or which blinks when you are trying to download the code now what I'll try to do is I will try to reduce the delay let's say to 500 milliseconds and I'll try to upload it once again now you'll see while uploading again this LED will be blinking continuously or very fast now it is compiling the sketch for now this is the first step now see this is uploading the uploading process has started it's finished and now you can see the LED blinking faster so this is the first and most important thing that you will do whenever you get a new Arduino board so I hope this is clear to you how to do these processes the presentation is given to you in which you can copy the link from and just get started with your USA 32 board and then continue further understanding the different interfaces thank you for watching this video